Good morning. It is Thursday, August 5th. I am at the sign at the Katahdin Stream Campground. Uh, so, obviously I'm not going all the way down to Springer again. I've already done the bottom third of this trail, so the things I kind of want to pay attention to is the main New Hampshire state line. That one's going to be a little, little bit the ways. And, uh, well, I'm not doing anything north. I'm going to come back and Summit Katahdin when I'm done with everything else. So, just waiting right now to talk to the park ranger. Uh, she's going to get us signed in. Like, even if you're just walking out like I am, you know, there's a lot of folks that come in here. You know, they're they're registered, reserved. You know, reservations are extremely hard to get into the, the camp right now or the, the entire state park because um, everybody wants to camp. And uh, there's a bunch of folks that are going to be summiting today. You also need a permit to do that. So I'm going to cross that bridge when I get to it which is going to be here in just a couple months uh, after I finish the northern two-thirds of this trail. So, yeah, like I was saying, we just got to check in with the, the ranger, let them know you're in the park. Um, I will be getting out of the park today. I'm trying to make it to the Herd Brook Shelter, um, which is, for me, about a 13 and a half, 14-mile day. Um, a ball bridge is few miles down the road that is actually the start of the 100 mile wilderness that's when you get out of the baxter state park um, proper the, the park itself um just gonna take my time do what i gotta do today it's uh starting about one o'clock it's a 40 percent chance of rain ramping up to about a 60 percent chance of rain by five o'clock and there's a chance that it's gonna pee on us all night long so that's fun but after not seeing rain for the better part of three weeks now, it's going to be good. Temperature here is amazing today. It feels like it's about, you know, mid-60s. Um, so I won't be raining quite as hard as the sky will be, which is nice. I don't have to carry water 19, 20 miles. I don't have to sweat my butt off. And I don't have to worry about too much humidity because I'm in Maine. <laughs> so um, at the ranger walking up now. She's coming up uh, right there, so... I'm going to shut up, get registered, start walking, and I'll catch you again in a little bit. Yep, there it is. Welcome to Kadan Stream. So right over there, under that picnic table, where we're just checking in with the ranger. She gave me my yellow tag. I got to drop one to get out of the camp. And uh, yeah, so now I start walking. I got to go down here, down the tote road. And I'm following that until I hit the trail and I'll pretty much start my walk. I actually have bear cables on these uh, on these little campgrounds here. You see them hanging right there. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, speaking of which, do not feed bears. Please do not cut or peel any standing trees. You don't want to do that because the stab rabbits take care of that for you. And when I say stab rabbits, I mean porcupines, actually. There's some evidence of them chewing on the uh, the poles on the uh, little picnic table cover where I was just checking in, so that was pretty funny. But um, I'm in Maine. I'm here. Starting a whole other adventure, going south. Feels really nice. But... Uh, I got nothing right now. I'm going to start walking, and when I see something cool, I'll bring you back. This is cool. So this is the trail in northern Maine. Well, central Maine, I should say. The northern end of the trail. Bunch of spruce roots, bunch of rocks. But it's beautiful. This is definitely the kind of forest I like. So, zero complaints. I am walking in Maine. And yeah, I know I'm going south. I'm not hitting the end of my trail yet. But it still feels damn good to be here. I love it. 
Oh, and by the way, uh, that spruce candle shop smell that I was telling you about even all the way through uh, Mount Rogers in Southern Virginia, it's back. I mean, I know you're probably amazed because let's, let's face it, I'm in a spruce forest. A spruce forest. Just... Man. <sighs> Mushrooms everywhere. I gotta figure out what kind these are. I'm not gonna do any foraging until I know exactly what's up here. I've seen a couple bull leaks, but that's about it. Everything else is a little sketchy. But got uh, about eight miles, 8.2, I think, to get to a ball bridge, which is the end of Baxter State Park. Or the beginning, depending on how you're looking at it. So, just gonna enjoy my day walking through these woods. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky, I'll see a moose. Because these woods are so thick, apparently the moose tend to uh, use the trail as a bit of a highway, which doesn't surprise me, as nice as this trail looks. So, gotta keep on my toes. A moose is not something I'd rather actually personally mess with. So if I see one, I'm going to be backing off. Because they are significantly larger than black bears. Even if I do happen to see a black bear, I kind of know how to deal with them. Moose, unpredictable and big. Even the cows are big. So I'm going to keep walking. I don't think I'm going to have much in terms of views today. But uh, if I do see something cool, you'll see it too. Let me get through this little section here. Now this goes on for a while. So I'm gonna shut you, shut you off. This is Grassy Pond. First pond I've actually come to here in Maine. Most of the water is crystal clear. Absolutely crystal clear. Kingfisher making noise over there. That hill in the background that's covered in clouds, that is part of Katahdin. Can't see it yet. So I hope it uh, clears up for folks that are actually walking up there today. But, man, it's a beautiful little pond. Not really going to be camping near any of those. But, I suppose you could. I got just some canoes here. I guess you can just take out and paddle around if you want. But, I got places to be today. Things to do. So, the trail is calling. So, let's get back to it. I just had to come down here and check that out because it's exactly what you think it's going to look like. It's great. And back on the trail. I haven't seen these in a while, but that's actually a trillium with a seed pod forming. There's a couple down here. Not too many, but it just took me a minute to actually realize what I was seeing. Because I haven't seen them in quite some time, to be honest. But I guess they exist up in Maine. A bunch of them. It's another one. Along with some random plant that has a bunch of berries on it. But yeah. Another one. I'm going to have to keep my eye out. Because if I can pick some of those when they get ripe, I'll be able to grow my favorite flower. In a garden or a pot or something else at home. It's pretty cool. But this is 
a trail. There's a pond right here. I'm not sure what pond it is. And this is the trail walking around it. Rocks and roots and you name it. Which I've done like a mile and a half so far for the day and this has been literally the entire trail. So it is what it is and I'm here for it. Beautiful, beautiful area in the state. A really pretty pond, I might add. Really pretty pond through there. Almost glass smooth. No wind today. Apparently it's a different story up on top of the mountain, but none down here. The first main critter. Big old chunky toad. <laughs> Wildlife. It's apparently everywhere. I hear birds all over the place. Haven't seen any, but I hear a lot. This place is pretty wild. No pun intended. That bird out there is the first loon I've ever seen. Wow. First day in, in hiking in the trails in Maine and I see a loon. That's pretty cool. I guess it's used to seeing people because it, it's just been slowly swimming along. I've heard they were skittish, but in this park, doesn't surprise me they're used to seeing people. This place is apparently jam-packed. But that's cool. That's really cool. Little dude is not happy with me. I guess I just disturbed him when he was having some breakfast. I don't know what kind of squirrel that is. Red squirrel? <laughs> He's a grumpy little dude. Yeah, I get it. Uh-huh. Fine, I'll let you have the last word. <laughs> so I just passed uh, the Daisy Pond camp area, and now I'm walking up to I think it's called Little Niagara Falls. Oh geez, I almost fell backwards there. But this is my first taste of the swampy, mucky, poopy, rooty, rocky stuff that I'm gonna be seeing probably for the next week through the 100 mile wilderness. So best start getting it out of the way. I'll check back in at the falls. Big Niagara Falls. Little Niagara Falls was up the way a little bit, but I didn't stop there. Might be a good place to have a snack. That's what I'm gonna do. Here they are. The first wild Maine blueberries I've come across. I'm gonna pick a couple of these. Should be good. And there we have them. Mmm. <sighs> this is so good. Ah. Oh. Can't wait to find more of those. Holy crap. Those were good. But I'm in Maine, so I guess they're everywhere. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. That's where, uh, that's where it came from. That creek that's running right over here. I guess where I'm at right now is called Pine Point. And this is where that creek actually joins the Penobscot River. That's a, a very large river that I've actually wanted to fish for quite some time. Unfortunately, I'm not here and I don't have time to fish, so. I will have to come back and enjoy that at some other time. Beautiful river, though. 
gorgeous river. It's amazing. Oh, man. But I've got a few miles to go this way to get to a ball bridge. I want to say I'm exactly four miles away, so making pretty good time today. So let's keep cranking. If you ever ask me to define the most picturesque trout stream I've ever seen, up to this point in my life, I would have to say it's this. The Penobscot River in Maine. I was unaware when I hit Pine Point back there, and actually when I entered uh, Baxter State Park this morning, that I'd be walking along the banks of this beautiful river for the better part of four miles, a little over four miles, I think, over four miles. It's killing me that I don't have a fishing pole right now. <laughs> I've seen trout jumping. Ah, uh, it's beautiful. But hey, I'm just chalking up places that I know I'm gonna come, be coming back to visit eventually. And this is definitely on that list now. I actually have a climb here, nice. We're gonna get to that bridge and away from these mosquitoes. They suck, literally. No idea what kind of mushroom that is, but it's got pretty, pretty purple. Yeah, it's bigger than I thought, too. Huh, neat. There's a, a ton of bolites around here. I can't believe it. I was in the mood to actually start picking mushrooms. I'd have pounds worth within a quarter mile. But I'm about 0.8 away from a ball bridge. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna stop for lunch there. I think there's a restaurant, so we'll check that out when I get there. Every time I stop moving, the mosquitoes just attack me, so I gotta keep moving. Crap. They're all over the legs. They're dying. Got him. Ugh, dirty bastards. I saw my first snake in Maine, too. See him right there in the center. Little garter snake. Little brown garter snake. Come on, little buddy. There he goes. <laughs> Again, whenever I stop, these mosquitoes are brutal. Huh. This whole area is a big old beaver pond, it looks like. This creek running down that way. And it looks like the building over in the background there. But uh, that little station right there, that is the drop off point for your day hiking slip. Obviously, it's the Baxter State Park boundary. So I'm officially done with Baxter State Park for right now. I will be coming back in a few months. I'm probably going to go right back up to. Katahdin Stream Campground, where I started this morning. Uh, that little dude sitting right there at that little uh, station there said, my biggest enemy for the next hundred miles is going to be water. Although not in the way I have been having water as an enemy. Now I'm going to be walking through swampy areas, roots, rocks, mud, and mountains. I can't wait. This is, it's already a great day. I mean, it's 11.15. I've been making fantastic time through here. So, I got time for lunch. Um, Herd Brook is four miles away from where I am right now. Uh, Rainbow Stream is about eight miles away. So, I mean, I, I totally have time to get to either one of those tonight. So, I'm going to see where I feel like staying, you know, I might all the way, I might go all the way to the, uh, um, to Rainbow Stream, maybe, I don't know, either way, I'm going to walk up this road for a little bit, uh, this is the Golden Road, and it's going to take me across a ball bridge to get to uh, the campground and restaurant, stuff like that, so I'll check back. I made it to the uh, a ball bridge area i guess campground store general store there's a little shop right there 
restaurants closed except for breakfast and due to unemployment being <laughs> the issue where people don't actually want to get jobs um so but they did have uh, cold sandwiches got a uh, ham sandwich <laughs> this place is kind of pricey though obviously they, they can do whatever they want really because this caters to paddlers because the uh the river is right over there and uh, car campers and day campers I guess not necessarily through hiker friendly um, per se but you know it is what it is uh, two sodas two Gatorades a bag of Doritos a small bag of Doritos and a um, uh, 8 inch sub cost me 25 bucks so I was kind of yeah is what it is but now I don't have to have lunch out of my bag. It spares me a little bit more. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to finish this. And I'm only going to get to uh, Herd, Led or, uh, Herd Brook uh, Lean To tonight. i got 3.8 miles to go. Uh, and I'm only doing that because uh, I thought Rainbow Ledges or Rainbow Stream or whatever. I uh, thought that was only 8, according to one of the dudes I talked to earlier, but it's actually another 11.3, and yeah, I've done 10 today, I'm, I'm not going to push another 11.3 to get to a, a campground without a shelter or bear bags or anything, or bear cable, so I'm going to finish my lunch here, I'm going to get rolling, and I'm going to get settled in at that first lean-to here in uh, the 100 Mile Wilderness, and uh, pretty excited, not going to lie, I'm pretty excited to... Uh, get back into one of the more remote areas in uh, in North America and the U.S. So it's exciting. It's going to be, it's already been a great day, but it's going to be an even better day when I get out there. So I'll check back with you. Well, here we have the uh, Penobscot River again. A little gentleman down there doing a little bit of fly fishing where the uh, little creeks come together there. But uh, up there behind him, right there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Mount Katahdin. I'm not doing it right now. I am going to be coming back to climb that side. But I will be back. So now I just gotta do my uh, my walking. Down into the. There you go, guys. Get down into the 100 mile wilderness. Man, I, I am just. I am kind of in awe of that mountain. It is a, a big, 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 big one. So. Ah. I'll be back for it. I will be back for it. I believe that. So, 3.8, 3.6, whatever I got left to go for the day. We get to uh, a lean to at Herd Creek. So, I'm just going to take my time. I had to take some Tylenol because my feet are just killing me right now for some reason. Some of the roots this morning. I had to climb over, which sucks every time for me but uh, either way I'll check in when the first cool thing comes along yeah this is the start of the 100 mile wilderness of course to give you the warning you know 100 miles south of Monson, have enough of your stuff, know what you're getting into. But my favorite part is actually right here. Right there. More door or bust. I can get behind that. First steps into the longest wilderness section of the entire trail. This is exciting. This is definitely going to be an adventure. First time I've ever found these. Black trumpet mushrooms. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Apparently they are absolutely delicious, but... 
I am not going to be picking anything out here for the first couple days. Uh, and I'm definitely gonna try and, man, these things are everywhere. These are all over the place here. I'm about two miles in to the 100 mile wilderness. So I have plenty of time to, to do some research and goof off with mycology and other fungus related endeavors. So, and I know it's from what I've seen in the last couple of miles, it's like if I had to rely on nothing but foraged mushrooms for the entire time I'm walking through the 100 miles, I'm fairly confident I could do that because there's just so much out here. And people that are coming northbound, unlike farther south, I mean, these folks are just trying to burn through and finish. So, yeah, I don't think anyone's picking anything. I've seen so much. And of course, you know, as moist as it is here and with the rains coming, well, there's going to be more growing. It's, it's a guarantee that there's going to be more popping up here, you know, in the the week I'm planning to be taking to get through this section. So, but that was pretty cool. I've, I've never found trumpet mushrooms before black trumpets. So, so much new stuff here today. But I need to keep getting down this rock strewn, root infested trail. Get my way to Herd Brook Wing Two. Oh, speaking of mushrooms, real quick, might as well. That is about as textbook of an Amanita as you will ever find. It's just growing up. And there is a single solitary chanterelle. And you're not picking that either. Oh, man. So exciting. So exciting. That is, in essence, the trail here so far in the 100 mile wilderness. I'm gonna sit back here and relax for a moment and just let that try and sink in. I'm hiking in the 100 mile wilderness in, in Maine. <sighs> that's, that's cool. Yeah, I know I haven't, you know, gotten here after doing the other, you know, 2,100 miles worth of trail, but this is still a pretty serious part of my adventure, of my trek, you know? And, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, you know, what order you do the miles in. It really doesn't. The trail is here for everybody. You want to walk it north, south, any combination in between. And I'm not even in the purest and, and with the whole, you know, through hike and one season, you know, definition, you know. I know a lot of folks out here who have done, you know, sections because, guess what? They have jobs, they have lives, they have school, they have, you know, X, Y, Z, name it. Um, but they've still hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. And in my opinion, that makes them a through hiker. So, you know, if anybody gives you any grief, you know, if you, you've got any thought about doing a long trail, you know, whether it's the AT, the PCT, CDT, Florida Trail, you know, Pinhody, any of them, Arizona Trail, Colorado Trail, you name it, just do it. And if it takes you a while to do it, who cares? It's your hike. It's your adventure, it's your story. You're still gonna see the entire damn thing. You know, I mean, look at this. I'm in the woods, in a spruce forest in Maine. In Maine, you know, I'm a Virginia boy. I grew up in Herndon, moved out to, you know, a little town called Percival, and. You know, I've been living north of Winchester ever since, so. Well, not anymore, since I sold the house, but, but still, I mean, this is so far out of my wheelhouse 
that just being here is an adventure. It's very exciting by itself. It's incredible. To me, it's incredible. And I'm glad I could bring you along with me. This next week is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. If I don't trip and snap an ankle on one of these roots, <laughs> we'll keep going. <laughs> Apparently, there's a little ground squirrel that lives in there who's uh, been eating pretty good. All these little husks and rinds of uh, pine cones here. <laughs> right next to the trail. There's plenty of stuff for him to eat around here. See these little pine cones and stuff here. Yeah, that's what he's eating. Him eating good. So this is the view out the front of the Herdbrook Shelter. Uh, a little ways down there. I'm not sure if you can see the gap in the trees, but it looks like there's a pond. Yes, my laundry's hanging and drying. I got some more hanging up there, and of course my pack, but this is where I'm going to be staying tonight. I'm be getting up early. Uh, I have my alarm set for 5.30. I wanna try and get a, an early start because I wanna try and bang out about 19 miles tomorrow. Uh, it's gonna be a long day, and the feet are probably gonna be barking when I get there, but I'm gonna make it work. So I'm gonna have dinner here, probably gonna have uh, just a, uh, ready-made mountain house meal because I don't feel like cooking that much and all I got to do for that is heat up some water quick and dirty so a good day today made it from uh, Katahdin, Street Katahdin Stream Campground here to the Herdbrook Shelter uh, I want to say it's like 13 and a half miles total that I did today um, which I'm cool with first day you know in Maine uh, getting up here to the, the 100 mile wilderness I'm I'm making positive miles into the 100 mile wilderness now so we'll see how I can do the next couple days. Um, but for right now, I'm going to sign off. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the morning.